Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. This is BSL Hustle League round of 32 group. D upper in corner, we got Bloomster starting as the green Terran. Bottom left in corner, we got Flying starting as the blue Zerg. This is going to be on retro at cross spawn positions. And given Bloomster seems to really, really like these off timing quick pushes into Zerg opponents, which is very on the nose for what Terran are doing these days. Might be challenging at cross positions on retro here. And also this is a map where you do have a more sealable third base to work with. And you can also just take mains bottom right and just plop down a lurker on the ramp to work with. So if the last match was any indicator, Bloomster's on the hot seat and flying. Looks like he's going to fly his way. I should say some, I should just mix that up instead of flying, sailing, scooting. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to breeze his way. Breeze. There we go. He's going to breeze his way into the final match, potentially. Initial Overlord Scout making its way bottom right hand corner. We'll see if we, we'll be able to redirect that in time to uh, top right to keep an eye on the Marine Medic Count. And again, not having that Overlord in position f has shown trouble time and time again versus Bloomster in particular, because when he's noticed that lack of vision from his Zerg opponents, he has tried to punish it. And last game, for a minute, I'm like, okay, he's going to make it happen. And also, and a lot of these games have been really, really close as far as Bloomster. And I think he's he's good on some of these timing attacks and then just, just uh, missed the macro and a few other aspects to follow. But we'll see if uh, he can make up for it here. Spawning pool dropping in the main. <clears throat> Looks like it is going to be a very early... Look at this. Flying, mixing it up. So we got a one base spawning pool extractor play. Let's go. Early Zerglings in large numbers. And I think this might be a response to Bloomster style. Noticing he's like, okay, you want to throw early Medic Marine at me? I'm going to punish that very, very hard. Uh, let's see if he even sends out a drone scout. I don't know that he needs to because he's going to go for the initial Zergling coupling. And now the question is for Bloomster... Does he create proper defense top right hand corner or is he going to try to sneak one racks into uh, expansion? Still hasn't scouted this. Sending out an SCV to go ahead and blockade the ramp momentarily and it looks like he is saving up to try to go one racks into expansion. This could be, we'll see if we also see Zergling speed on top of this, but the other, yeah, okay, we are going to see fast Zergling speed. Another thing would be a, a two hash, a two hash muta all in uh, rush. And unfortunately for Bloomster, he's getting zero eyes, and it looks like he is going to go for one racks into expansion. Depending on the number of Zerglings and the timing of this scout, this could really be punished by flying. It's going to come down to some micro from Bloomster as well. He does have three Marines out the natural expansion, but we don't have a bunker as of yet. Looks like that SCV is going to get scouted and quickly swarmed. It looks like flying is going to dedicate some play. So the Zergling sees that command center. Still going to work. Looks like he's still dedicating to deal with that SCV. And the Marine's moving out on the map. Bloomster, very aggressive. He's only left a single Marine out on defense. That, that could have been disastrous. So four Marines now with the natural expansion. Depending on how split up these Zerglings get. That's not what I wanted. There we go. How split up these six Zerglings get. Could be an easy defense or a difficult defense. It looks like he's still trying to bait this back. And we have another round of Zerglings playing their way out and flying. For a second there, I was thinking he was moving out another drone to just go for a quick follow-up. But this could turn into a Zergling all-in. And there's still no bunker nor a second barracks yet in place. So Command Center just finishing. No clutter out in the front. Zerglings diving in, getting a surround on the Marines. So Bloomster getting Bloomstered a little bit here. And there's a lot of Zerglings remaining. The SCVs have to huddle up and defend. But that's a big win, especially denying this natural expansion. All this delayed mining time with these SCVs that have to pile up and just sit, waiting for that liftoff momentarily. It looks like he still wants to get some SCV kills. Still might push his way in. The Zerglings able to get through, actually. More Marines dying. I don't see additional Zerglings flooding their way across, but this could be... With these two Zerglings, ooh, this could be really, really dicey because two Zerglings do beat Marines and they regenerate. Able to get some scouting information. It would have been game, actually, if Flying had uh, moved some 
dedicated a few more Zerglings, but it looks like the SCV is going to help blockade. So this is actually another Marine kill. This actually gives flying the economic lead. So base up at the natural expansion, finally, <laughs> finally defended. But the Spire just about finished. Fire bats being built by Bloomster, now getting a bunker and a commsat station up. He's going to be able to commsat the Mutalisks as they're incoming, is I think what's going to happen here. Yeah, that engineering base finished, and you really needed turrets building as these Mutalisks were building, and he threw in a fire bat on top of this. So he's going to have to really overproduce turrets to try to defend. So this, this will help against the Zerglings. So dropping the commsat, I think he's got to see it now. And now he's got to go in an emergency mode. Oh, and he still isn't... Okay, there, the, even missing that half tick could be huge. He needs to draw a lot of SCVs off the line immediately and produce as many turrets as possible as soon as that's finished because he's got an absolute skeleton crew to defend. And we got five Mutalists making their way up. Again, I don't know what lag conditions are like, but this could be a very quick one depending... Flying branching off. Interesting. Kind of spreading the Mutalisks out. Turret halfway finish right there. And flying, because he delayed a little bit, actually that turret going to finish in the main. But this is still not much of a defense force. Yeah, I think flying recognizes he had the, the timing advantage. So instead, going to work on that engineering bay. More emergency turrets being dropped by Bloomster. And this is a great situation for flying overall. Where, with just the few Mutalisks he has... Yeah, taxing a stim right there. Finding... Oh, yeah, this is beautiful for him. It looks like he's still building more Mutalisks. I'm not even sure that he needed to. He could have maybe snuck out and grabbed a third. He's already forced some additional turret construction across the field. Let's see if he can... Now that he's got eight Mutas, if he can go for further punish. He's actually went for armor first, recognizing this might have been a replay review thing, recognizing how late that science vessel came out as well, and feeling like, okay, well, if you're going to be that late with your science vessels, I'm going to abuse this. This is still just two turrets in a bunker trying to defend the natural. Two more turrets being dropped out of necessity. Engineering Bay being <laughs> repaired. So we got a full control group now of Mutalisks, not a full control group of Medic Marines. And a whole bunch of turrets. Things are looking really good. Third base going up at the 9 o'clock location, as well as a queen's nest in the background. And once you have a full control group like this, yeah, those turrets are hard to keep up. It is hard to keep them standing. Ryan taking some additional damage. Yeah, that's going to burn to ground. And I think it's... Even without the plus one weapons, you tack it twice. Ooh, lose... Some mutals just standing there, not attacking. And three of them go down. That actually might be a salvation maneuver there for Bloomster. That's going to... Flying still way ahead, but caps that. So Flying still has the economic lead. He still has the supply lead. He still has map control overall. Third, Barracks trying to get constructed. Another mutalisk goes down, but in the meantime, Bloomster able to take down several mutalisks for very, very cheap, but the Queen's Nest is on the way. Yeah, and I'm wondering, <clears throat> Twitch chat pointing this out, credit to Liru. I don't know what the turn rate is in this situation. I do feel like turn rate punishes Mutalus Micro for Zerg more than, I, I think really more than, it changes this matchup pretty, I know Artosis would probably say, no, it's the Terran matchups that are worse, but really Mutalus trying to Micro like in low turn rate, it's just really, really difficult and completely changes the matchup. Makes it so much more challenging. Nine o'clock base up. We'll see how quickly Flying's able to get that gas down. Might be overproducing Mutalisks right here this second. But I don't think he's going to pay for it because we're still at the... We're nearing the 10 minute mark. And we're still on three barracks. No factory. And we're nowhere near a science facility. Science uh, vessel as well. So these Mutalisks with their plus one armor are going to be very, very strong for quite some time. Should be an easy transition into Greater Spire. So never mind. Flying rather than going for what honestly I think would be the straight win. I don't know that he... I think this is just showboating at this stage. 
feeling he's so far ahead. He's gonna have to be careful with this, but going for Greater Spire for the turnaround rather than going for the Defiler Nest. He does have that third gas up and running. Hydrolsten also dropping the nine o'clock location. Not sure that it was needed. A few compsats being dropped. Bloomster does have a, an army out, but honestly, I think there's enough Bunalisks where with decent and plus one weapons isn't there yet either. Wow, this is so late for Bloomster. Showing you kind of the disarray that his build's been tossed into. Medic gets picked off on the edge. Gas continuing to filter in. Greater Spar just about finished. The Mule is, I assume, going to dive down into that bottom pocket, and there's no anti-air. Okay, one problem for flying is if he overproduces Guardians over that natural, he might end up giving Bloomster an opportunity to march across the map at some point, but we'll see what the turnaround is. Finally, that factory finishing at the 11 minute mark. Oof, that is rough. So more Mutalisks. So, oh man. Yeah, okay, and the position of this, if the Medic Marines sit here a bit, this could be a lot of dead Medic Marines as well. We have Lurker Tech, we do not have Lurker Tech, so it's just Hydralisks here in the background. This is kind of my concern. We're flying might be tossing this away. It looks like also we, we've got an armory dropping with the starport to try to get Valkyries up in play. Probably going to be too late. But the Medic Marine breaking through, some Hydralisks starting to march on the attack force. These Hydralisks can easily be taken care of. The Guardians can just attack move to the natural. But now can flying defend his base. He, I don't think he has Lurker Tech. Yeah, he does not have Lurker Tech, and he doesn't have the Mutalisks anymore. So yeah, he takes out the natural expansion, but he needs to emergency drop a bunch of creep colonies at the natural. Yeah, this is my concern with this. And he doesn't have time to get it done. Bloomster's in the red, but he's got enough of an attack army where he might be able to breach and get a kill here at the natural expansion. So crazy one here. The Guardians continue to march forward. They're going to try to clean absolutely everything up there at the main. We'll see if the Valkyrie gets in the air. We'll be able to counter that. None of the sunken colonies able to surface. The Hydral's being taken out to the north. And Flying's natural expansion now breached. And yeah, the one opportunity, and if that Seagull Wraith gets produced, that should be it. Looks like it is not going to be produced. So all of a sudden, it's turned into a base race situation. Sunken colonies just getting dropped left and right. Few Guardians being morphed in the main to try to defend this. I don't know that that's going to be sufficient. Bloomster just needs to, yeah, back up and try to hold on. Flying, yeah, just if he can get some something colonies up and rebuild here at the 9 o'clock, it'll be one base versus one base, and he should be in a superior situation. Wild one again! So Hive Tech going to get dropped. Greater Spire should get dropped. Let's see if the, all these Overlords are exposed as well. Let's see if the drones are able to escape. I don't think they're going to be able to. Queen's Nest is going to get taken out as well. And a number of Guardians fanning out. Let's see if Bloomster, if he can just get a Starport down and a Wraith out, he's in a good situation to win this. Instead, nope, he's going to GG right there. Just too many Guardians. Didn't feel like he had time to make it happen and recognize in a base race it was going to be a challenge to walk up that 9 o'clock ramp. So... Flying advances to the winner's match, or the final match, I should say. Crazy games thus far. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.